Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister here from Traction Dynamics and I'm going to show you today uh, some fine points for assembling a Wahoo kicker to the new Action Rocker plate. And I've got the plate fully assembled here. Uh, we don't even ship this with instructions because it's actually just that simple. You can't put the ribs together the wrong way. Uh, it's very obvious it's just three pieces and, and the screws, you literally can't screw it up. Uh, and the plate goes on, you know, quite obviously. Uh, we're we're going to mark those left and right for you. But typically with the Wahoo products, the big hole for the power cords is on the left. Uh, my only tip to assembling this is just assemble all the hardware loose on the ribs and then tighten the top table first so that you pull the ribs up flush to the top table, then tighten the screws that hold the ribs together last. That would be the only tip to that. Now to facilitate this, you roll the kicker onto its back and uh, you're going to remove the foot, the adjustable foot on the front of each leg. You're going to undo, remove the, uh, the black foot on the bottom that's along the back of it and you're just not going to use those parts anymore. Uh, we supply you hardware to pass through the arm. You're just going to put the arms back in the frame and pass the hardware through. Our short spacer goes on the center area here. Long spacer goes on the end. And I've had good luck doing it like this, laying it on its back and then taking the plate and kind of guiding it onto the holes there and letting it just rest. And now it makes it easier for me to get my hardware going. Uh, this hardware I'm showing you is not nylock, but what comes in the kits is nylock. It will take you a little longer to thread them down and tighten them as a result, but I think it's safe to assume once your kicker goes on your action rocker plate, you're never going to, you're not going to want to ever take it off again. All right, so we're going to do that. Then we'll start the side feet. Uh, the side feet are really, if you can come around and look here, there's just a ton of flop and slop to them from Wahoo. That's just how they are. So uh, it's pretty easy to get them started. You want to get them down. You're going to tighten these last, but I go ahead and get them down pretty close uh, so I don't have to mess with them too much later. Uh, this is just takes a couple of tools, a 17 millimeter wrench, and you will need a 14 millimeter socket or wrench, and at least a crescent wrench so you can hold the top and bottom bolts, depending on what's available to you at your house. Where's my stuff at? Here's this. All right. Now, here is one of the fine points. So we want the trainer to be align real nicely so there is some you know mechanical available kind of slop if you will you know just from all the nuts and bolts but we want to get the back of the main frame as parallel as possible to uh, the rocker plate which is you know again a, mach a perfectly machined part so uh, I just prop this up with a piece of wood under here on the front you could use a, you know, a shoe box, and it doesn't even matter what, what you got laying around. What we want is the uh, trainer to be slanted backwards so that it naturally kind of finds the U's of the holes, and which are perfect, and then it will self-align. So if you've got it kind of cockeyed, it could be a little cockeyed off. We don't want that. We want it to just find that nice natural center um, and in the bottom of the bolt bores and then tighten these two bolts first. Once these two mainframe bolts are tight, then you're gonna be good to go for the rest of the operation here. Let me 
demonstrating this with a like $12 ratchet kit. <laughs> you got laying around. I don't need much ratchet stuff here at home. All right. So that's all good and tight now at this point. That's easy to finish tightening your side legs. If you're an airplane mechanic, you're going to ask me the torque spec. There is no torque spec. Some people call it one bang popping and two grunts. Who knows? But that's where we're at. Just make sure it's tight. <clears throat> All right. So it's aligned and tight. Next is going to be your power cords. And this is, again, going to apply to any model of trainer. I'm going to show you <clears throat> how to do these in, in a moment with another video. I've got to bring home the uh, zip ties, and I'll do that in another video. Let me show you. I'll show you that next. So, all right. So there is mounting your trainer, aligning it and getting it ready to go. Uh, we start with kind of base counterweights of around eight pounds. And I will show you in another video here in a minute how we are going to counterbalance these. So we're going to send you 10 pounds of weight. Their thin ones are one pound, the medium ones are two pounds. The caps are three pounds with the hidden thread. So they're nice and clean. Initially, don't tighten these bolts because you're gonna to have to dynamically get on your bike and go for a ride. And that's when we'll tighten those next. So I'm gonna leave those loose for right now. I wanna show you one more feature while I've got you here. <clears throat> um, I'm on a concrete floor. So we supply you with a roll of gaffer's tape. So if you're on any hard surface, uh, hardwood, concrete, whatever, run three bands of this uh, cloth gaffer's tape along the base of the rib. That makes it non-skid and protects the rib and the floor from each other. Take a razor blade and on your forward rib, slice out the gaffer's tape and expose this hole. You can easily find it by just pushing on the tape with your finger and knowing about where it's at. And I'm gonna show you something super cool that that is for. So, this is for our, our chocks. So, it's very difficult. It's not easy to mount a trainer, a bike to a trainer that's rocking and wobbling. These just line up with our ribs very, very easily. Actually, let me show you what it looks like. Here, come in here first. You're just gonna slide these under. The edge catches and they align, right? So that's all you're gonna do is push these under. You can do this with your bike assembled on here. So just find the rib, uh, push the chalk into place. And there it is. Come to the other side, and it lines right up with the rib perfectly. So just slide it in until it engages. Now this is, might as well be your floor. Won't move at all in any way. So this is useful. So now if you want to mount your bike, it's very stable. If you want to work on your bike to oil your chain, play with your bike fit like saddle height, handlebars, any of that kind of stuff, the chocks make it very, very easy and normal to do that, uh, even better than a bike stand. All right, so those are some of the fine features. Actually, let me just show you right here while I got you. No, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, all right, so this is Max. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Be back with another one to show you how to cable and another one to show you how to counterbalance. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please share this video with your friends that are interested in rocking.